Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on stability analysis and root locus technique. In this video, we are going to sketch root locus. We are going to find out the break away and break in points. We are going to find out the range of K for which the system is under damped. And we will also find out the value of K for the critical damping system. Now first I will read what is the given problem. The loop transfer function of a feedback control system is given by G of S H of S is equal to K S plus 6 divided by S plus 4. Question 1. Sketch the root locus plot with K as a variable parameter and show that loci of complex roots are part of circle. Second, determine the break away or break in points if any. Third, determine the range of K for which the system is under damped. Fourth, determine the value of K for critical damping. Five, determine the minimum value of damping ratio. So this was the given problem. Let us first sketch the root locus. So what is the first step? So first step is to find out the number of poles and number of zeros. Now if we observe this given transfer function ks plus 6 divided by ss plus 4. So how to find out the number of open loop poles? Notation is L. So for that we have to take denominator in the form of s and we have to equate it to 0. So I will equate it that is equal to 0. So we can say that s is equal to 0 and s plus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore s is equal to minus 4. So there are two roots. So we can say that the number of open loop poles n is equal to 2. And these poles are s is equal to 0 and s is equal to minus 4. Now what is the number of zeros? Notation is m. So we have to take the numerator in the form of s. That is s plus 6 is equal to 0 and therefore s is equal to minus 6. So we can say that the number of zeros that is m which is equal to 1 and it is at s is equal to minus 6. Now we will plot poles and zeros. I will show here the cross sign for poles and I will use here zero sign for the showing the zero. Now we have to plot the S plane which is the combination of real axis and imaginary axis. So here this is the real axis. On this on the right hand side we have to take the plus number that is 1, 2, 3 and on the left hand side we have to take minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. And this vertical line is imaginary axis and we have to plot the value in the form of Z. So on this upward side Z, 2, Z, 3, Z that is positive numbers and in the downward side we have to take minus Z, minus 2, Z, minus 3, Z and so on. Now we will plot here poles and zero. Two poles are there at S is equal to zero, S is equal to minus 4. So here is zero that is the point of intersection of real axis and imaginary axis and at S is equal to minus 4. Now we will plot 0 at s is equal to minus 6. So this is there is only one zero. Now how many number of branches are there? So number of branches that is equal to number of poles and that is equal to 2. So this is the first step that is getting completed. Now what is the next step? We know that the branches originates from the open loop poles and terminates to the open loop zero and remaining branches terminates to infinity. Now for this question there are total two branches that will originate from these two poles out of these two branches one branch will terminate to zero because here only one zero and remaining one branch will terminate to infinity. So for this question number of branches terminate to zero that is one. And number of branches terminate to infinity that is also equal to 1. Now we have to find out the range of points for which to the right hand side total number of poles and zeros is odd number. So if we find out this range of points then this range of point is the part of the root locus. Now we will use here trial and error method. 
Now I will take the point in between 0 to minus 1. So here if I select any point then on the right hand side there is only one pole. So here 1 is odd number. So remember 1, 3, 5. That is these are the odd numbers. So we have to find out the such a range of points. So in between 0 to minus 4 if I take any point then on its right hand side there is only one pole. So in between 0 to minus 4 all the parts or all the points are the part of root locus. So I will write that range that is in between 0 to minus 4. Now after minus 4, in between minus 4 and minus 6, if I take any point, then on the right hand side there are two poles, that is the even number. So in between minus 4 and minus 6, no any point is the part of root locus. Now after minus 6, if I select any point up to infinity, on the right hand side there are total three number of poles and zero, which is odd number. Then we can say that in between minus 6 to infinity, here this range of points is the part of root locus. Now we will show these points which are part of root locus with the help of black marker. Now here from minus 6 to infinity. Or we can say here minus 6 to minus infinity because on this side we will say last point is minus infinity. Now we will find out the break away or break in points. So how to find out? So we know that the solution of dk by ds is equal to 0. So for the value of k we have to take the characteristic equation and this characteristic equation is 1 plus g of s h of s. So we have to take 1 plus k s plus 6 divided by s s plus 4 is equal to 0. So from this we will find out the value of k. So how to find out this? So for this value of k we have to transfer this 1 to the right hand side. So it will become minus 1. Then we have to transfer this denominator to the right hand side. So it will move to the numerator. So at the same time I will multiply this s inside the bracket. So s square plus 4 is divided by. Then this numerator if I transfer to the right hand side then it will move to the denominator. So here this is the value of k. And we have to show this as equal to 0. Now to find out the break away or break in point, we have to take a differentiation on both sides with respect to s and we have to equate it to 0. So I will take dk by ds is equal to, now here minus sign I will keep as it is, then we will take here from numerator and denominator both are having equation in the form of s. So how to take the differentiation? So Denominator constant multiplied by we have to differentiate numerator that is 2s plus 4 here we will complete one bracket minus numerator constant s square plus 4s multiplied by we have to differentiate this denominator so for this differentiation of s there is only value of 1 so I will complete this bracket divided by we have to take square of denominator and we have to equate it to 0. Now, if I transfer this denominator to the right hand side, it will become 0. If I transfer this minus side to the right hand side, then it will become 0. So, what is remaining? This, these two brackets. So, I will multiply these two brackets with each other and I will simplify this numerator. So, 2s square plus 4s plus 12s plus 24. Then I will multiply here minus side inside that is minus s square minus 4 is which is equal to 0. Now again we will simplify this that is s square because 2 s square minus s square then this 4 s 4 s is getting cancelled plus 12 s plus 24 is equal to 0. Now we have to find out the roots to find out the break away or break in point. Now from these roots we can decide here these points. Now if we observe this is a second order equation. So how to find out we have formula. 
माइनस बी प्लस माइनस अंडर रूट ऑफ बी स्क्वेर माइनस फोर ए सी डिवाइडेड बाय टू ए व्हाट इज दिस ए बी सी ए इज कोफिशियंट ऑफ ए स्क्वेर बी इज कोफिशियंट ऑफ एस एंड सी इज दिस कांस्टेंट सो आई विल राइट माइनस बी सो माइनस ट्वेल्व प्लस माइनस स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ बी स्क्वेर दैट इज वन माइनस फोर ए सी दैट इज वी हैव टू टेक हियर ट्वेंटी फोर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय फोर दैट इज नाइंटी सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाय टू ए सो ए इज वन सो ओनली टू इज देयर नाउ अगेन वी विल सिंप्लीफाई दिस दैट इज वन फोर्टी फोर माइनस नाइंटी सिक्स वी हैव टू टेक स्क्वेर रूट दैट इज सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन And here minus twelve plus minus divided by two. Now again we will take minus six plus minus six point nine divided by two. That is three point four six. So here this is the solution. Now we will get here two points. That is minus six plus three point four six. So if I take here minus six plus three point forty six. It is equal to minus two point fifty four, or we will get minus six minus three. That is minus nine point forty six. So these are the two points. Now we will check whether these points lie on the real part of root locus. Now here is the minus two point fifty four. So after two, here is the point which is minus two point fifty four. So this is the part of root locus minus 2.5 or we can say 2.5 and here minus 9.46 so after 9 here is 9 point or minus 9.46 now these two points lie on the part of root locus so one point is break away point and second point is break in point so how to decide which point is break away point and which point is break in point so we know that when we refer this break away point then branches will originate from poles it will move towards the break away point and then it will depart if we observe from this pole at minus 4 the branch will move towards right hand side if it move towards the left hand side then in between this minus 4 and minus 6 no any point is the part of root locus so branches always move with the points which are the points which are the uh, part of root locus so here from this minus 4 the branch will move towards this to minus 2.5 pi and here branch with pole at 0 will move towards this point at minus 2.5 so this is the break away point and remaining point is the break in point so here is the break in point so when we say this is the break away point and break in point that means branches will depart from this point that is break away point and it will it will meet at the break in point so this is the loop is getting completed so we can say that if the loop is in the form of circle then we have to find out its center and radius so how to find out so to find out the center and radius of circle again we have to take the solution of dk by ds is equal to 0 so value of k from the characteristic equation so same process is there and when we get the roots so roots in the form of this minus 6 plus minus 3.46 then here is the solution for center and radius now if we take here center as Minus six and radius that is plus minus three point forty six. So remember the solution of dK by dS is always in the form of center plus minus radius. Now we will sketch the root locus. So we know that this is the break away point that is at minus two point five and here is the break in point. So branches will start from this break away point and it will meet at the break in point. So from these two poles, we have to show here the direction towards the break away point. Two branches will depart at this break away point. So.
So one branch I will show here with center minus 6 and radius plus 3.46 and it will reach up to this break in point and the second branch with center minus 6 and radius minus 3.46 we have to show here it will reach to this break in point. So there are two branches from these two poles. Now break away point I will show here with letter A pole P1 is there pole P2 is there and here 0 Z1 and these two branches will meet at the break in point. Now we know that one branch will terminate to 0 and other branch will terminate to infinity. Now from this break in point if we observe uh, there are the all the points in between minus 6 to minus infinity are the part of root locus. So branches will move along the, the points which are the part of root locus. So here from this break in point one branch will terminate to 0 Z1. So I will show here the arrow. And other branch will terminate to infinity. So I will show here the arrow that is minus infinity. So there, here are two branches. One branch will terminate to 0 and other branch will terminate to infinity. So in this way this root locus is getting completed. Now we will move for the next question. So what is the next question? That is we have to find out the range of k when system is under damped. So what is the condition for system is under damped? So here if poles are complex then the system is under damped. So from this diagram if we observe all the poles in between break away point and break in point. So these are the poles along this line which I have drawn that is along this semicircle, this upper semicircle and lower semicircle. These are the parts of the complex number because how we can say that suppose I have drawn here one pole. Then this is the how to find out its value. So this is the part of real number that is minus 3 and here 2z. So minus 3 plus 2z. This is the value of this pole which is the part of real number and imaginary number. So we can say that this pole is having complex number. Then these poles always appear in complex conjugate. That means if this pole appears then here exact down in the downward vertical downward direction here is also pole appear. Its a value is minus 3 minus 2z. So these poles appear in complex conjugate numbers. So when the system is under damp, then the poles are complex. So how to find out this? So for that we will first take the range of k. So this k minimum that is the minimum value of k and maximum value of k. So this if value of k at break away point that is at, at this point value of k is minimum. And in opposite value of k at break in point is maximum. So we will first find out the k minimum and k maximum. Then we will automatically get the range of k. Because in between this k minimum and k maximum all the poles are complex number. And that's why system is under damped. Now how to find out the k minimum. So for that we have formula. That is we have to take the product of length of line joining break away point and poles. Now for this break away point that is point A is joining with poles P1 and P2. So we have to take the length that is AP1 multiplied by AP2 divided by product of length of lines joining break away point and 0. So here break away point is A and here 0 is Z1. So we have to take the length of line between A to Z1. So we have to take this. Now if I take this that is AP1. So what is the value of AP1 that is 2.5. Because here this minus 2.5. So distance in between this is 2.5. Then AP2. So distance in between point A. A and point P2 is 1.5. So this minus 3 to minus 4 and remaining is 5. So we have to take this distance divided by A Z1. So from A to Z1 here from Z A to Z1 that is from minus 2.5 to minus 6. So what is the distance? 
so we can take here the difference so when we take the difference then it is 3.5 so when we put all the values then we will get here the answer 1.07 so we can say that k mean that is the minimum value of k is 1.07 now in the same way we will find out the maximum value of k. So we can say that the value of k at break in point is k maximum. So we, I will change here only. Then k maximum is equal to product of length of line joining break in point and poles. So here I have to write just break in point and poles divided by product of length of line joining break in point and zero. Now break in point is B. So I will take here the distance. That is B P1 into B P2. So B P1 and B P2. Divided by B to Z1. So we have to take this positive distance only. So I will take here the distance should be positive. So we have to just measure these units. So B to P1. So here this point B. Here this P, P1. So what is this distance? That is 9.5. Then B to P2. So here P2 is at minus 4 and here is at minus 9.5. So it is 5.5. Then B to Z1. So B to Z1 that is minus 6 to minus 9.5. That is 3.5. So now we will solve this. So after solving this we will get here 14.92. 14.92. So here this, this is the range that is k max is equal to 14.9. For under damped system we have to write the range that is 1.07 is less than k is less than 14.92. Now next question is the value of k for critical damping. So critical damping will occur at this break away point and break in point. So for break away point this value is k minimum 1.07. And for break in point k maximum 14.92. So these are the two values. Now next question. Minimum value of damping ratio zeta. So how to calculate this zeta minimum. So for that we will draw here constant zeta line. So what is the condition to draw this constant zeta line. This line should be tangent to this circle. And it will pass through the origin. So I have drawn here one line which is tangent to this circle and it, it is also passing through this origin and what is the point of intersection so if i draw one vertical line on horizontal line then this point of intersection is this distance is minus 4 and this distance is 2.75 so this is the point now how to calculate this so cosine of the largest angle made by zeta line so here largest angle made by zeta line that is this angle theta and we have to take the cosine that is cos of theta. So how to find out this cos of theta. So for this theta if I take this tan theta that is opposite side divided by nearby side. So opposite side is this vertical distance 2.75 divided by 4. So I have to take here cos of tan inverse of. This 2.75 divided by 4. So we have to consider only units. So if I take here. Then we will get the answer 0.824. And this is the minimum value of damping ratio zeta.